What's up everybody? So, we are continuing to test Shadow Swampert in different team comps in the Great League. And in my previous video, I showcased Shadow Swampert alongside Emolga and Victini. And today, we are going to be trying it out alongside another spice pick, which is Wash Rotom. Now, Wash Rotom is another really interesting pick. Uh, from GoFest, uh, it's got the exact same typing as a Lantern, but the only difference is that it hits a lot more harder, but it's glassy as well, which is why it can be a little difficult to use, but it's a lot of fun as well. And I'm going to be running these two alongside Skarmory to basically provide protection against grass types, uh, which both Rotom and Swampert will struggle against, right? So let's just get into these battles. Okay, moving on to the first battle here, I'm going to be leading with Skarmory with uh, Rotom and Swampert in the back. So we have Skarmory into Stunfisk, absolutely terrible matchup. So I'm immediately going to switch into my Rotom. Now this isn't a great matchup either because Mud Bomb and Mud Shots are doing super effective damage because of the electric typing. And I'm going to let this go through because we can survive one of those. And I'm really trying to get to a Hydro Pump here. Unfortunately, they're able to get to another charge move, right? So I'm going to have to shield this up because I really want to land this Hydro Pump. I'm hoping this goes through uh, because... I hope they think it's a Thunderbolt or something, but let's see what they decide to do here. They actually shield that up, which is not great because now they can completely farm us down. And this is definitely an uphill battle because they have so much loaded energy. So I'm going to wait out the switch clock and then obviously come in with my Swampert here. And yeah, I'm going to come in with Swampert. I'm expecting them to switch out, but they're still staying in. So I go straight for the Hydro Cannon here. Now this is definitely going to get the final shield because they have so much loaded energy. It does get the shield there and they actually make a switch into their Azumarill. This is absolutely fine, right? Because they have no more shields. I can go straight for the Sludge Wave here. This is super effective because of the Fairy typing. And it's going to do about 80% of Azumarill's health as it does there. And I'm going to switch into my Skarmory to basically soak up the charge move. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm not going to shield this because I have to save that final shield for my Swampert. It is a Hydro Pump, which is absolutely fine. I'm going to completely farm this Azumarill down. And if the Stun Fist comes back in, I'm not going to throw the charge move, right? Because I don't want them to over farm. I want them to throw their charge move as quickly as possible. Because I need to land a Hydro Cannon on it anyways, irrespective of whether I manage to land a high, uh, Sky Attack or a Brave Bird. But I'm going to let the first one go through because we can definitely survive one of these. Luckily, they go for the Discharge. I'm not sure why. And I'm expecting them to switch out anytime. They make a switch into their Abama Snow. I go straight for the Sludge Wave here. Now, this is going to one-shot the Abama Snow because it's super effective uh, because of the grass typing. And now Stunfist comes back in and this is exactly why we saved that final shield. I'm going to shield this up and it's just a race to the charge move, right? It's just a race to who can get the next charge move off first. It's going to be extremely close, but we're able to get to a Hydro Cannon just in time here. This is super effective because of the ground typing and it's definitely going to one-shot it. So Swampert pretty much soloed their entire team there. It pretty much one-shot, I mean, almost took out 80% of Azumarill, one-shot the Abama Snow and also took took out most of Stunfisk's health as well. And that's just how dangerous it can be towards endgame, especially if you can save at least one shield for it. Anyways, moving into the second battle, we have met with the Swampert. Now, this isn't a great matchup for Skarmory, I believe. So, I think Skarmory loses in uh, the two shield and the one shield. I'm not sure about the zero shield. Probably Skarmory wins because of the Brave Bird. But I'll have to do the Sims on that one. But anyways, uh, yeah. I'm just going to wait for them to throw their second charge move. Uh, this Hydro Cannon is not going to KO. So it's going to put us pretty low, but I'm going straight for the Sky Attack here. So this, let's see if this gets the shield. I probably could have gone for the Brave Bird, but they shield that up, which is absolutely fine anyways. So I'm going to immediately switch in my uh, Swampert here. And I have to shield this up because Hydro Cannon would do a lot of damage. It would do about 60 to 70% of Swampert's health. And they actually make a switch into their Skarmory. This is absolutely fine, right? Because we have the energy advantage. And we have two back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons at this point. So I'm going I'm going for the first one here. Does over 50% of Skarmory's health. And I go straight for the second one. Now this is definitely going to get the final shield from the Skarmory. Because it would take it out if it goes unshielded. Which is absolutely fine. And I'm obviously going to shield this up as well. Because I really want to land the next Hydro Cannon. And get rid of the Skarmory. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to over farm. Because I know I'm just going to throw the Hydro Cannon just before they can get to a Sky Attack. The reason I overfarm is because I need to save up a Hydro Cannon to throw at the Swampert when it comes back. So as you can see, Swampert comes back in and we have a Hydro Cannon ready to go. So immediately going to throw it. This is definitely going to finish off the Swampert here, which is really crucial because Rotom doesn't want to go up against Swampert. They have a Blaziken in the back and now it's just a race to the charge mode. I'm really trying to get to a Thunderbolt here. But unfortunately, we lose the CMP there. And even though Blast Burn is resisted, it's just such a hard-hitting move. It takes us out. And unfortunately, the health on Skarmory and Swampert is way too low, right? It's just way too low that the counter damage is just too much at this point. It's going to take us out there. So definitely, there was definitely a win condition there. I think the more obvious win condition there was 
uh, if I'd switched out uh, of that matchup and switched into my Rotom in time, then I probably could have gotten to a Thunderbolt before they got to a Blast Burn and that pretty much would have made all the difference. So we met with a Shiftry. This is absolutely perfect, right? Because you want to see the Grass types on the lead with this team comp because the backline obviously struggles against Grass types. And this is obviously going to be a foul play, which I can definitely let, let it go at this point. And they make a switch into their Charizard and I go straight into Swampert. In hindsight, I probably should have gone into Rotom because Swampert has more reliable, uh, consistent matchups towards endgame. Uh, whereas Rotom can handle Charizard as well, right? But anyways, we're still here with Swampert and I go straight for the Hydro Cannon. This is easily going to one-shot the Charizard here as it does there. And they actually come back in with Shiftry and now I'm going straight for the Hydro Cannon here. Now, even though this is resisted because of the shadow damage and the fact that Shiftry is extremely glassy, it just it would do a lot of damage. They shield that up, which is absolutely perfect because now we are up a shield and I'm going straight for the high, uh, Sky Attack. This is also going to get the shield, right? Because they have so much loaded energy, they don't want to let that go waste. And Charge Bomb coming through, absolutely going to shield this up because I don't want my uh, Rotom to go up against their shift tree. So they make a switch into their Lantern and I go straight into my Rotom here. Now this is a very sort of uh, matchup between very two, simil two very similar Pokemon with the exact same typing. And I go straight for the Thunderbolt here. This is going to do neutral damage to the Lantern because of the water and electric typing. In hindsight, I probably could have let this charge move go through. But I'm going to shield this up because only because I don't want my Skarmory to go up against their Lantern. And I go straight for the Thunderbolt here. This is definitely going to finish off the Lantern from this range. And it's still going to come down to the wire, right? Let's see what we can do here. They come back in with Shift Tree. And they can't completely farm us down because I can possibly get to a Thunderbolt. So they have to throw a charge move, which is fine. But I know they have loaded energy, right? I'm really trying to get to a Sky Attack before they can get to a Foul Play. And we are able to get to a Sky Attack just in time here. This is definitely going to finish off the Shift Tree to take the win there. So, with this team comp, obviously you want to see Grass types in the lead. And if you don't see Grass types in the lead, you typically want to switch out that opening matchup after staying in for a bit because you want to bait out the Grass type so that Shadow Swampert has a clear path to victory towards endgame, right? So, anyways. Moving into, we are 2-1 in the set right now, I think. So we're moving into the fourth battle. So in the Skarmory mirror matchup, what I like to do is I like to farm up uh, on quite a bit of energy. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to wait for them to throw the charge move first and then switch into my Swampert. So they're also over farming quite a bit here. So I'm going to not shield this. And it looks like I'm going to have to absorb two sky attacks because I don't want to switch into my Swampert against a loaded Skarmory. So... We are well past 100 energy right now, which is kind of unfortunate, but I don't want to throw a charge move right now, right? So I'm just going to let the sky attack go through and immediately come in with my shadow swampert here. And they're still staying in this matchup, so I go straight for the hydro cannon. This hydro cannon is going to come close to taking out the skarmory and it's almost going to finish it off. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite finish it off because they can get to another charge move. So obviously going to shield this up and I can probably completely much shot farm the skarmory down at this point. They're still staying in for some reason, so not sure why there. They come in with their Medicham and I, we have back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons, I'm definitely going to go for it here. This is definitely going to start getting shields because this would do a lot of damage if it goes unshielded. It gets the first shield there. So I immediately go for the next one here and let's see what they decide to do. Let's see if they want to burn both their shields because we have so much loaded energy on Skarmory, right? Now the switch timer has come back up and I go straight for the Sky Attack. In hindsight, I probably should have gone for Brave Bird because that would have one-shot the Medicham. But now it doesn't one-shot it, they make a switch into their Azumarill and I go straight for the Sky Attack here. Now. It's definitely going to start chipping away at Azumarill and we should be able to get to another Sky Attack before they can get to a Charge Move. And we get to another Sky Attack here. This is going to put the Azumarill into the yellow, which is really crucial. And yeah, but it's fine. At this point, we still have our Rotom, which is a very positive matchup against Azumarill. And the only thing I have to worry about in this matchup is obviously played off because both Ice Beam and Hydro would be resisted. It's just an Ice Beam, which is absolutely fine. And I'm going to completely try and farm this thing down. They're able to get to another charge move here. So I'm going to let this go through. Unfortunately, it's a play rough. That does so much damage and I can't farm down at this point. I have to throw the charge move to get rid of, the, get rid of this Azumarill and it's going to be extremely close. So I'm going to immediately switch into my Swampert to make sure they don't get ahead on energy. But we have these still have shield as well. I'm going to shield this up and it's going to be extremely close here. Another game which is going to come down to the wire. But we're able to get to a Hydro Cannon just in time here and this is definitely going to finish off the Medicham. So you'd never say never with Swampert, right? I mean, it's, it's just so OP and it's just so reliable and consistent as a closer across all leagues. It's just, it, it's arguably the best Pokemon to use in all of PvP, right? Anyways, we are 3-1 and one in the set. Let's move into the final battle. Let's see if we can make it 4-1. and one. Uh,
So we have Skarmory into Bastiodon. Absolutely terrible matchup. So I'm gonna safe switch into my Rotom here. They make a switch into their Altaria and I'm going straight for the Thunderbolt. Now the key in this situation is I have to make sure that I win switch advantage, right? Because I have to make sure that my Swampert is lined up against their Bastiodon and not my Skarmory. So I'm gonna shield this up because even though Sky Attack is resisted, like I said, I'm really desperate to try and maintain switch advantage. And I'm going straight for the Thunderbolt and I'm really hoping this Thunderbolt doesn't get the shield from the Altaria because Swampert can beat Bastard on Rauno shield as well, right? But that was very smart play. They obviously shielded that because uh, now they can make sure that once they win switch advantage, it's, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle at this point because I'm just going to completely farm this Altaria down, right? I'm going to completely farm it down. I don't care how much damage we take because uh, Skarmory is going to get completely walled by Bastard on anyways, especially with double flying type moves. I mean, when you had flash cannon on it, Skarmory obviously had some play against a Bastiodon, but uh, with double flying moves, I mean, it's double resisted, so there's not a lot you can do against a Bastiodon. And I'm going to immediately try and switch into my Swampert, but Bastiodon comes in instantly, deletes my Swampert, and they have an Azumarill in the back. So, this is going to be extremely close, because now what my only win condition, obviously, is to bait with Hydro Cannon and then uh, land the Sludge Wave, and hope that that KOs. That's my only hope here. So I go straight for the Hydro Cannon. This is definitely... This, this has to get the shield, right? This has to get the shield from the Azumarill. It does get the shield, which is absolutely perfect. And I'm going straight for the Sludge Wave. Now, this is the problem that Azumarill is just so tanky that this is not going to one-shot it, as you can see there. And my only win condition is to completely farm this Azumarill down, right? That, that's basically my only win condition. But unfortunately, they're able to get to another charge move here. And this Ice Beam is definitely going to take out the Swampert and we take... Yeah, we lose that one there. So, as you can see, it's a 3-2 and two set. It's, overall, it's not bad. I mean, I would have preferred to go, obviously, 4-1 and one or 5-0, and oh, but 3-2 and two is not bad. Like I said, Rotom is slightly tricky to use because it's fairly glassy. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.